It really is impressive how Roller Coaster Track can twist, turn, and invert in several different ways. From airtime hills to pretzel loops, there is an absolute plethora of elements that you can introduce to a roller coaster. However, while some elements like vertical loops are quite common, others are pretty rare to come by. So let's take a look at just a few of the rare elements you could find all over the world. First up is a pretzel knot. This element can currently only be found on Banshee, a B&M inverted coaster at Ohio's Kings Island. Initially added to Kings Island in 2014, this was the first original B&M invert to come to the United States since Patriot came to Worlds of Fun in 2006. It is currently the longest inverted roller coaster in the world and the only one in America to feature B&M's new vest restraints. Its elements include a vertical loop around the lift hill, a zero-g roll, and a pretzel knot. This element isn't to be confused with a pretzel loop, since that is exclusive to B&M flying coasters. The pretzel knot is a similar element that consists of two inversions, both of which give this element the pretzel shape it's named after. While it's currently the only still operating coaster to feature this element, it isn't the first. This element first appeared on Moonsault Scramble, a defunct shuttle coaster that once operated at Japan's Fuji Q Highland. The coaster is most notable for exerting 6.2 Gs on its passengers. It was also the first roller coaster to be over 200 feet, but that's a discussion for another video. Element number two is a scorpion tail. This element currently only exists on Cobra, a PAX shuttle coaster at Switzerland's Connyland. Though Switzerland is notable for being the home of high-profile manufacturers like Intamin and B&M, there are actually very few roller coasters in the country. However, in 2010, Connyland introduced the first roller coaster in Switzerland to feature an inversion. Instead of being made by a Swiss manufacturer, though, Russian manufacturer PAX was hired to build this coaster. This model, known as a Loop 520, features a standard vertical loop and an elusive scorpion tail. This world's only inversion truly has to be seen to be believed. It consists of a brake that holds passengers upside down at the end of the track before sending them backwards through the course. The way the track suddenly seems to end admittedly looks pretty terrifying, even if you're not actually riding it. Switzerland may not have that many coasters to offer, but the sheer uniqueness of this ride is sure to make it a must-ride for enthusiasts. Element number three is the Flying Snake Dive. This element can currently only be found on Storm Runner, an Intamin launch coaster at Pennsylvania's Hershey Park. Between the record-breaking Top Thrill Dragster and King Ka, this Intamin Accelerator first opened at Hershey Park in 2004. Unlike both of the aforementioned coasters though, Storm Runner features a longer layout with a few inversions, including the Flying Snake Dive. For those of you who have never heard about this element, it consists of a Heartline roll immediately followed by a half Immelman roll. After such an intense first launch, you'll zoom through this inversion with excellent speed, and it's truly an unforgettable experience. It may not have the record-breaking speed or height of other intimate accelerators, but this inversion alone really does help the ride stand on its own. Element number four is a demonic knot. This element can currently only be found on Fleur de Demonen at Germany's Heidi Park, also known as Flight of the Demon in English. This was the first ever wing coaster to come to Germany, opening in 2014. In keeping with Merlin's argument habit for horror-themed coasters, this one is naturally themed to flying demons, and features detailed trains designed by German graffiti artist Marcus Genesios. In keeping with its demonic theme, this coaster has a signature element called the Demonic Knot. In summary, this inversion is pretty much a standard Norwegian loop tilted on an angle. For those of you who don't know, a Norwegian loop is a dive loop immediately followed by an Immelman. Passengers of Flight of the Demon often report that the tilted Norwegian loop exerts unique forces that make it one of the best wing coaster inversions out there. Though these forces are pretty hard to explain, so the only way to know for sure is to check out this ride yourself. Element number five is a Lagoon Roll. This element can currently only be found on Cannibal, an in-house made coaster at Utah's Lagoon Amusement Park. Opening in 2015, Cannibal is currently the steepest roller coaster operating in America. Its unique design starts off with an enclosed elevator lift that takes passengers over 200 feet high before sending them plummeting down a beyond vertical 116 degree drop. Although its national steepness record will soon be beaten by an upcoming Eurofighter in New Jersey, it'll still have one thing that that coaster won't, the Lagoon Roll. 
immediately following this coaster's mid-course brake run. This element consists of two back-to-back -back heartline rolls in opposite directions. So right after rotating counterclockwise, you'll suddenly be sent clockwise. Because it follows a brake run, this slow-moving inversion provides excellent hang time, and with the ride's lap bars, it's sure to feel especially frightening for first-time riders. A unique element like this simply can't be passed up. Element number six is the Top Gun Stall. This element can currently only be found on Twisted Colossus, an RMC iBox coaster at California's Six Flags Magic Mountain. Back in 2015, the classic wooden coaster Colossus was refitted by the fine folks at Rocky Mountain Construction into an all-new steel tracked hybrid. This new coaster keeps the original structure of Colossus while adding all-new wild twisting elements to it. One of these new elements is the incredible Top Gun Stall. This element, which can only be featured on a dueling coaster, features the green track flipping over the blue section and hanging riders over the passing train underneath. This element gets its name from the 1986 Tom Cruise movie Top Gun. In one scene of that film, a fighter jet actually flies over a Soviet jet while upside down. It was quite a memorable moment, and the same goes for this element. If you happen to catch this ride when it's dueling, you're in for a real treat. Element number seven is a banana roll. This element can currently only be found on Takabisha, a Gertzlauer Eurofighter at Japan's Fuji Q Highland. Originally opening in 2011, this coaster currently stands as the steepest coaster on Earth, with a beyond vertical drop of 121 degrees. It's also one of only a few coasters on Earth to feature both a launch and a chain lift, and is currently the only one out there to feature a banana roll element. While it sounds more like a specialty dessert, this element is similar to a cutback, but instead of inverting, the train is tilted to its left side at its peak. The name of this element comes from the peculiar banana shape it has from a certain angle. Its shape is certainly one of a kind, although in 2019 you'll also be able to find this inversion on the aforementioned Eurofighter at New Jersey's Nickelodeon Universe. This coaster is set to break Takabisha's steepness record when it opens and features the same overall layout, including the banana roll. If you live in the US, your chance to experience this element is about to come into fruit-ition. Sorry about that. Moving on. Appropriately enough, element number 8 is a bent cubinate. This element can currently only be found at both G-Force at England's Drayton Manor and Dream Coaster at Iraq's Dream City. This element may not be one of a kind, but with a name like this, how could I not include it? This particular element is exclusive to the Mar Vertical X Car. This coaster model features the inverting chain lift of Mar's Skyloop, but also the longer layout of their standard X Car model. An example of their standard X Car model being the Hollywood Rip Ride rocket at Universal Orlando. Opening in 2005, G-Force was the first coaster to come to Drayton Manor in over a decade. While its reception among parkgoers has been mixed, one thing that really stands out with this coaster is its bent Cuban 8. This element features two consecutive inversions, a Sidewinder and an Immelman. Much like the Immelman, this element is named after an aerobatic maneuver. This maneuver, called the Cuban 8, was accidentally invented by Len Povey, an American aviator who served in the Cuban Air Force. The bent part of the name comes from the the fact that it looks like a number 8 that was bent at an angle. If you're curious to know what this element feels like going through, feel free to head on down to England or Iraq to check this one out. Element number 9 is a bow tie. This element can currently only be found on Dragon Mountain, an aerodynamics custom looper at Canada's Marineland. Long before the SeaWorld Park started adding roller coasters, this massive aerodynamics looper opened in 1983. It currently holds the record for the longest coaster in Canada, and many have pointed out that it's basically a steel version of the Beast at Kings Island. Much like the Beast, it too has a secluded layout that covers quite a bit of ground. Unlike the Beast though, it features inversions, including the world's only bow tie element. This element is basically a modified bat wing, but instead of making a U-turn, you exit going the same direction as you entered. Much like the bat wing, this element gets its name from its shape, which loosely resembles a bow tie. As rare of an element as this is, it's featured in the game Planet Coaster, which just goes to show the developers did their homework. And finally, element number 10 is the Ferris wheel lift. This element was once featured on Roundabout, a premier ride steel coaster at South Carolina's defunct Freestyle Music Park. This was a short-lived coaster that belonged to one of the shortest-lived parks of all time. Originally opening as Hard Rock Park in 2008, this park suffered greatly from overinvestment, inexperienced management, and worst of all, low attendance. It was such a mess that the park closed a year after it originally opened. As for its coasters, the park had five built on opening day. One of them was Roundabout, then 
then known as Maximum RPM. Unlike the rest of the park's coasters though, this one wasn't ready for opening day. It took two whole months after the park's opening to get it running. Many have speculated that the delay was due to its unique Ferris wheel lift, which is definitely the most memorable thing about this coaster. This lift held four sections of track that rotated from the station at the bottom to the drop at the top. Though its method of ascension was unique, many have speculated that it was an unreliable system. Some say that the sections of track on the wheel were hard to align with the drop and the station, though because of the park's low attendance, no one really knows for sure how reliable this was. Then again, Premier Rides hasn't made another one of these Ferris wheel lifts, so it's pretty clear that it didn't work out for them. So if you actually got to experience this when it was open, consider it a very lucky Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at ThemeParkCrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.